I don't like to talk to people. I'm a very introverted person. That kid who would sit in a corner with both of his hands in his pocket and his head down, that's me. It's where I feel the most comfortable. My dad, however, is a huge talker, just like my great grandpa was. And one of the things that they can do best is use their memory, use their stories to entertain people. I am the oldest of five children, and most of our children are all being cramped in a confining with a lot of loud voices, which is why I have my favorite memory that my dad took my brother and I on, just the three. We went to Disney World, and it was the very first time I was able to ride an airplane. When we got there, we got to use the single rider lines, which made getting out rides much faster. We rode Rock and Roller Coaster, the new Avatar ride at the time, and Expedition Everest so many times that I lost count. Memories are a tricky thing. Why can I remember the smallest details of my favorite memory, but I can't remember what I ate yesterday? Dr. Chris Heath writes in 2017 for Psychology Today that like a character made out of Legos, we're all built of blocks of consciousness that form, to form together to form our consciousness. Today, let's delve into the mysteries of the human mind. We begin by examining early studies in cognition. Then we will see uncover a phenomenon that leaves our earliest memory shrouded in fog. Before we can, after that, we can see how technology impacts our memory and Finally, we will confront a range of diseases that rob us of our cherished recollections. Our understanding of the brain started in ancient times, when the Greek philosopher Aristotle identified the heart as the most important organ of the body. He identified it as such because he believed it was the seat of cognition because you could feel any emotions inside of your chest, and this led people around him to believe it to be true as well. Hippocrates challenged this idea by suggesting that the brain played a crucial role in our cognitive processes. Though he lacked significant evidence at the time, his ideas laid a groundwork for a shift in understanding. Today, we understand the brain's complexity as modern technology allows us to study the brain in depth. This study leaves one lingering question, however, which is why do we struggle to remember our earliest life experiences? And this question became personal when I encountered a photograph of myself as a child on my dad's classroom wall. Despite looking at this image of my dad holding me up at a water park, I couldn't trigger any memory of that moment happening. Unlike my favorite memory at Disney World, I couldn't trigger any of the sights, the sounds, or the tastes, or the smells that occurred on that trip. And it led me to wonder just how much of my early life had slipped from my memory. And in researching this topic, I found out that I'm not alone in this experience. It affects everyone, and it's known as infantile amnesia. Research by Jean Shimsky at the Royal Holloway University of London indicates that infants as young as six months can form memories that last for a considerable amount of time. Yet as we age, these memories often don't stick around. The precise reasons for childhood amnesia are still under investigation, but it may have to do with the growth and changes our brains undergo during these formative years. These initial experiences lay the foundation for our growth, learning, and the future memories we create. And as we transition out of the haze of early childhood recollections, we arrive at the digital age, an era where our reliance on technology has significantly changed how we remember things. Our smartphones and devices hold the most smallest, minuscule details of our lives. My phone holds a photo that reminds me of my least favorite memory. When I was younger, I had to go to the doctor for a ruptured eardrum, and I dreaded having to go because I knew the immense amount of pain I was going to face. Strangely, the photo on my phone isn't of the surgery or me before the surgery. It's of a drawing that my dad made me before I was under. I don't remember him drawing it or him giving it to me, but my phone's photos show that it happened. From phone numbers to birthdays and pictures of things we don't remember doing, these bits of information are no longer etched into our minds, but stored in the cloud, accessible with a tap on a screen. This shift has led to what's known as digital amnesia a term describing our tendency to forget information because we've outsourced our memory to our digital devices. Cognitive scientists are showing, have shown that our increased dependence upon this technology is causing us to lose the ability to form strong connections. Professor Oliver Hart points to the potential downsides of our tech dependency. He draws a stark contrast between the past and present. Our early human ancestors honed their spatial memory and navigational skills out of sheer necessity for survival. They had to remember the, remember the location of food and water sources, as well as the routes to and from their shelters. This constant use and reinforcement of their spatial memory and navigational skills led to the refinement over generations. In stark contrast, modern life has us turning to GPS and navigation, uh, digital navigation to find our way. 
a convenience that comes at a cost. Professor Hart warns that this convenience is weakening our brain's spatial capabilities. Digital navigation doesn't challenge the brain in the same way navigating with a traditional map does, and it's causing to a decrease in gray matter density in a critical area of the brain that's associated with psychological conditions, including dementia. Speaking of changes in memory, a song that means a great deal to me has the following lyrics. I drive a Chevy, cause he drove Chevy. Like him, I'm a baseball fan. I'm going back to see him while he still knows who I am. The song, While He Still Knows Who I Am by Kenny Chesney, shows the heartache of watching a loved one's identity slip away. Imagine a world where memories, the very essence of our humanity, slowly slip away. This is a world that unfortunately many of us know all too well. Memory-related illnesses are something that run throughout my family. I lost my great-grandfather to a gravity. And it's the worst because you lose your loved one a hundred times mentally before you lose them physically. In my lifetime, I had the fortunate opportunity to build and foster a relationship with my great grandpa. And one of my greatest memories was with him when he taught me how to fish in the pond in front of his house. He showed me how to put the worm on the hook. He, told me, he taught me how to cast a line and how to reel in my first catch. I still remember crying when I had to throw my first catch back into the water. When I was around age eight, my great grandpa started to show signs of Alzheimer's. And as time went on, it got so bad that half of the time he didn't know where he was or who his family around him was. I still remember the pain look my dad had in his face when he realized that his grandpa no longer knew who he was. Our bond was a treasure, one built and nurtured from my youngest days until he simply forgot who I was. This disease, a thief of precious memories, touches not just me, but countless individuals across the world. Alzheimer's accounts for a staggering 60 to 80% of all dementia cases. And it's a stark reminder of the fragility of our cognitive abilities and the delicate threads that hold together our identities. Yet in light of this fragility, we have some sort of hope. The CDC has marked fighting this monster a national priority. They specifically emphasize the importance of staying well, eating well, staying physically active, and avoiding substance abuse for reducing the risk of dementia. The Alzheimer's Association echoes this sentiment by suggesting that key lifestyle changes, including regular physical activity and good heart health, can significantly reduce the risk of cognitive decline. As Alzheimer's research forges ahead, we hold on to the hope of better treatments and the hope of prevention. In conclusion, the human brain is a complex and fascinating organ. Our memories from the earliest years to the twilight of our lives define who we are. The journey of cognition from infantile amnesia to digital amnesia and the stark difference between healthy aging and cognitive decline serves as a testament to the brain's remarkable adaptability and vulnerability. We are all connected through the profound experiences we create and by better understanding the brain, we can better appreciate the importance of preserving our memories for ourselves and for future generations.